In this lesson, we're going to look at creating start and end scenes. Now, this isn't vital, so this is going to be part of the extension. So if you don't feel like you want a start or end scene, that's absolutely fine. Um, but it can round the game off a little bit. So here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is just create our scenes that we need. So we're going to come up to scene and then new scene. Now, the node can be a standard node for this one. So we're just going to say um, node 2D, double click. And we're going to call this one start scene. OK, actually, I'm just going to close that gap. Might cause a couple of issues otherwise. Um, then I'm going to save it. So scene and then save scene. And then just make sure it says start scene, which is fantastic. And then I'm just going to create one more that says end scene. So new scene. And once again, we're just going to do a node 2D. And we're going to say end scene. And I'm just going to leave the gap out for now. And let's just save that as well. So save scene. Make sure it says end scene. Brilliant. So they should have appeared up here now. So if we have a quick look. So we've got our start scene. We've got our end scene. So everything is good. So we're going to need to create some fonts. So the first thing that I want to do is just import some fonts. So if I head on over to the font.com. And I've got this really nice one here. Um, if I click on it, you will notice one thing about this particular font is that there are no lowercase objects. So when you're typing in Go Godot, you're going to have to make sure that you use uppercase objects only. OK, so we're going to use that one. So I'm going to click on the download button. And it's going to download. Now, if I go over to my file manager, so if I click back to a scene that you've got. So we've just got this one here. And I'm just going to drag this newly downloaded. So if you don't see it here, remember it will be in your downloads folder. And you just drag it or copy it over into your 2D platformer project. You are going to need to extract it. So if we have it selected and then click on this extract button and then extract all. And then we're just going to click on this and it's going to extract it to the folder that we're currently in. So press extract. And we can close this window that's just open. That's absolutely fine. And we can now get, we've got this one here. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this one. Because I've downloaded it a couple of times, it's giving me a one on the end. I don't want that. So we can get rid of the zip file. So let's just delete that one there. Fantastic. And let's just drag this into our platformer. So just drop it into there. Make sure it goes. So there it is there. So now we've done that, if we just minimize these two windows, we don't need them anymore. And you can get whatever font you want, it's completely up to you. You'll notice that my font now is in here, and it's this TTF file that we need. So we've got our font set up ready, so let's set some scenes up. So the first thing we want is a background. So let's just grab a sprite, and let's just grab the background. And this is the one, you can use whatever you want. If you want to get a background from the internet or something, that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to stick with these ones. And I'm going to make it bigger so it covers the whole of my screen. Um, and you can do this with the end one. So I'm going to kind of build both of my scenes together. And for some reason, that's being a bit funny. There we go. And I'm going to build this one as well. So if I do the same here, press the plus button, come over to my sprite, and then we just want to call it background, drag that into texture, and then just make that bigger as well. It doesn't matter if it's exact size, we just make it as big as we want. Um, I'm just going to rename it background. Brilliant. And go back to my start scene and do the same here. So just call it background. Brilliant. So let's just save all that. So it's a good it's a good thing just to save it as you go. So now we've got that. Let's click on this first node again, and we're going to want to add some text. So the first bit of text we want is a rich text label. So if we click on this button here, and then start typing rich, and it should come up rich text label. So double click on that. Now the next thing we want, make sure it's all in one row, so it's not indented or anything silly like that. The next thing we want is to set up the font. So let's come down to our rich text label. Um, we can give it a name if we want. So we can call it title. And then let's come down here and let's just set up the font. So where it says custom font, the one we're going to use is this one that says normal font. So if we click on that and say dynamic, new dynamic font, 
and then click on this arrow again and then say edit now from the edit menu we can add the font so this is our font so let's go and grab our newly font here so here it is so click drag that on and now it's in it's gone to zero so we do need to make it a bit bigger so the size I'm going to use is 64 and press enter and let's go press this arrow to go back to the right menu at the top um, I do want to get rid of this scrolling and then we just make it as big as we can and hopefully it will turn up I do need to write some text and remember I need to write them in all capitals so I'm just gonna say play my game and press enter and there it is um, don't really like the color of that in actual fact I want to make it slightly bigger as well so let's go back to the font click on this this drop down arrow click edit and change it to 72 let's make it a little bit bigger um, and that's a bit better isn't it okay let's just drag that to the middle somewhere and let's change the color so click back on this arrow so we're back on the normal screen we can close this now the one we want is custom colors and it's this default color here so with that selected we can choose a color now the one I want is kind of an off blue color which is about it's about there somewhere more more purple than anything else that's quite nice so we can leave that as is the next thing we need to do then is to create a button so click back on this start menu and then click this plus icon and we want a textured button if we start typing we should get the textured button here somewhere there it is so double click on the textured button and we want a label for this textured button but let's add the let's add the hover and mouse down first so to click on the texture button we've got this normal and then we've got this hover and you can create whatever you want here it really doesn't matter so I'm just going to use a couple of tiles so the first tile I'm going to use is this one here and I'm going to drag that and I'm going to put it on normal and then I can stretch this out until I get it the way I want it so if I just actually it's not going to do that so let's just click it's because I need to expand turn on so turn expand on because I don't want it to be um, a normal shape and I'm not too worried that it's going a bit pixelated if I wanted to I could click on this and I could re-import this um, just to turn off the pixels so re-import that hopefully that should get rid of it and it looks a bit more pixelated now which is quite cool um, let's go to the hover so the hover is going to be a gray one let's do let's just do this one here okay fantastic and that should be okay now go back to scene so the texture button is fine let's just call it start game right and with it selected we just need a label so click on this and say label and then just double click and the label that we're going to create in this box here is just start remember because of the font I'm using it does need to be um, uppercase this one so come down to the font again so custom fonts and click on this one and dynamic fonts and then click on edit and then where it says font let's drag our font back in there so go back to my root folder then back to the top and just drag that in there if I'm going too fast for you remember you can pause it. it's not a problem it will go to zero so let's just start at 16 and see how that goes 16 or oh, let's try 24 okay 24 is good so let's just move that into the start position that's fantastic and I'm really happy with that so we can close all that I'm happy with the size pretty much happy with everything now before I move it into place just click on where it says start game and then lock the icons together otherwise everything will move out and it, and it won't work properly so let's just move it down here um, into the center that's great so we now have our button and everything's good to go we just need to do one more thing and that's attach a script so that it goes off to level one so let's save everything first so save all scenes now with this selected this start game button selected which is my textured button I'm going to click on the scenes I'm um, sorry the scripts button and I'm going to create a script so it's going to inherit from textured button and it's going to put it in here as start game and that's going to go into my root folder so press create 
Now with all this, we kind of don't need any of that again. So we're going to get rid of all of that. Now I'm going to click on this start game. It's really important that you click back onto this because we're going to use a signal. So if I click on the node button and then the signal that we're going to use is this one that says pressed. So double click on pressed. And then you do need to select this start game because that's where our script is attached. It's not attached to this top node, which is suggesting it's attached here. Okay, so select this one here. That's where it's attached and then press connect. Now we're ready to go. So we've got this new function that we can use and we're just going to move to scene. So the one we're going to use is that um, get dot, oh sorry, get underscore tree. Okay. So get underscore tree and then it's dot change scene. Okay, let's go to that one. And then it's speech marks, close bracket. Now we want to get a path. Now from the main menu, we want to go to scene one. So if we come over to here and find this level one, right click and copy path. And then we can paste the path in here. So we can just say control V and then we've got that. And that should now work. So if I save my scene, but in order to see that work, what we need to do is go to the project and set this up. So this is, so the start menu is the first scene. So we go to the project, project settings, run, and then it's currently set to run the level one first. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to come to this file icon and we want to choose the start scene. So the start scene is right here. So double click on that. Now that's the one that's going to run first. So when I click on this play button, all being good, we should have a, a nice little intro. And you can make your intro as flash as you want. You can use as many nodes as you want to make it look nice. So here we go. So click on that. So that's looking nice. Um, click on this and away we go. We're into the scene. So there is our first scene set up. So if you want to pause, get all that code in or rewind it if you missed anything. Now, the final bit we need to do is this end scene. So we come out of here and I'm just going to set up one more node and that is going to be the label again. Or we go to rich text label again. And on the rich text label, we're just going to say well played or something like that. So good game or something. Okay. Make sure it's all uppercase. So that's, I've got it uppercase because that's how my, my um, font works. So now we've done that. The same again, we're going to scroll down to where it says fonts, custom fonts, and where it says normal, we're going to load up a dynamic font, click on the arrow again and press edit, and then let's load up that lovely font that we've got. And let's just change the size to 64. And all being well, that should give us 64. Now, we do need to change the color, so let's just minimize this. Go back to this one here and find this. Oh, we're on the wrong one. Scroll down to the bottom, find the color. There it is, custom color. And let's just change this color to, all right, let's just have a nice lighter blue. 64 is okay. You could probably make that a bit bigger if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. Now, in order to get to our last scene, we just need to set up the last signal. So on yours, it will be on level four. Um, I've got mine on level two because I haven't created the last two levels yet. So if I go to my level two, and then I come to this signpost here, so this next level. So rather than going back to level one or whatever you had it doing, you're going to choose the end screen. So click on this, play, this button here where it says next world, and we go file. And the one we're going to choose is this end scene. Okay, so now we've got the end scene set up. Let's save all of our scenes and let's run our whole game and see if everything works. So press play. So press start and we're off. So we've got our game, all very basic. We're going to change that character next time into a proper character. Um, so we click on that and it goes to this next level, which is great, exactly what we want. I've got my dodgy level here, which I can sometimes work and sometimes can't. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So now when I go to this one, so remember this part now will be your level four. When I go over this, it will take me to my end screen. And voila, we've got the makings of a really, really cool game here. Very simple still, but we can add stuff as we go. So get that in. And then in the next one, we'll look at adding some character animation.